Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 72. As always, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching, and thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, I do appreciate it very much. Also, thank you for all the wonderful comments that you leave. I find that as often as not, people leave comments that teach me something as much as I'm teaching people things with my tips of the day. So uh, I love the fact that uh, very frequently I learn something from what people tell me. Uh, we get a little bit of quid pro quo going, so I do appreciate that. Okay, with that, we're going to move on to today's tip of the day. And this is one that I'm actually really excited to be able to bring to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because this is something that has historically been very difficult to do in Source Filmmaker, uh, which is to add cloaking effects to TF2 models. Uh, it, in the past, you had to use proxy materials, you had to download files that other people made, you had to go through a whole bunch of arcane steps. And if you screwed up anywhere along the way, it could get really ugly really fast because you're screwing around in the element viewer. Uh, and I don't know when Source Filmmaker added this capability, but I'm very pleased that they did because it makes it so much easier. You don't have to download anything. There's no messy creams or gels. You just can do everything to add these cloaking effects to models within Source Filmmaker itself. There is a caveat, however. These cloaking effects will only work on models that support them. So if the model doesn't support it, you're probably not going to be able to use this technique, which eff effectively means you're going to be limited to the TF2 models and not even all of those. But for those models, this will work. There are other ways to apply effects that make uh, model parts uh, or uh, entire models invisible or uh, make them transparent. But we are not going to talk about that today because it's a much more complicated set of st uh, steps. I might cover something like that in a future tip of the day. For now, though, let's add um, a cloaking effect to this spy. I have a heavy and a spy in red and blue, and I wanted to show you how you could do it to both. We'll start off with the spy because he's the one who obviously does the most cloaking in the game at any rate. So to, uh, to do this, first we're going to look at the spy's model in the element viewer. So you're going to want to right-click uh, an animation set for an existing model, uh, which you, you will need to have created, obviously, which I did before I started recording. So you look at the model, not the animation set in the element viewer, but the model in the element viewer. <clears throat> and then if you look here, what we're looking for is a node here under... <clears throat> excuse me, under uh, spy game model here, we're looking for one called materials. Obviously, we don't see one here. We're going to need to add it. Now, it used to be you had to right-click this, and you had to say add attribute, and you had to go down to um, a element array and do a whole bunch of other stuff. It's much easier now. Instead, we're going to go over here to the spy. We're going to right-click it in the animation set editor, and we're just going to say add override materials. And that automatically adds this materials element here, this, this element with all of these attributes underneath it. It used to be you had to add all this manually and then import all these materials and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Not so much anymore. It's wonderful. Now, to make the spy cloak, I need to switch over into here, um, you need to, there is one um, slightly complicated area, which is that there are many different parts to these models. There's the body, there's the head, there's the, there's, there's a separate version of the body for the, for the red version and the, let's see, spy blue is in here somewhere. So you, you see we, and even his tongue uh, and, and the, uh, all of the masks that he wears, all of those have to be able to cloak independently because they're created and, and, and shown at different times. So, because of that, you may find yourself needing to animate multiple uh, elements to make them go invisible. However, it's really quite easy. Let's say that we want to make this spy become invisible. Expand the element here for spy underscore red, and you'll see name and MT name, and then there is a thing here that says cloak factor. This is a number that goes from zero, which means no cloak at all, to one, which means completely invisible. Now you'll note that only his body disappeared, not his head. Yeah. There. His body disappeared, not his head and not his knife. Only his body disappeared. So that's uh, something that you need to keep in mind. You have to cloak each of these things independently. Uh, so let's say cloak factor 0 0.5. Okay, we get the idea. 0 0.1 is just barely beginning to cloak. And 0 0.8 is 
getting pretty close to being completely cloaked. You can also change the tint of the cloak color so I can make it uh, different colors here by just changing that. We're going to leave it white for now, which is what we started with. So I'm going to set this back to zero, and then I'm going to show you something even more fun. Now, being able to, to change the cloak, that's great, except that if the only way to do it is to change that manually, it's going to be truly a pain in the ass. Fear not, this is animatable. What we need to do is go to the parent element, okay? And you right click it and say, create animation set for element. What we're essentially doing is we're saying, I wanna take this chunk of the spy model and we're gonna create our own separate animation set for it. You're gonna get a pop-up here that says set attribute control ranges. There's only one animatable attribute in here, that's cloak factor. And uh, it'll list all of, if, if there's more than one, it'll list them on this dialog. For this one, there's only one, cloak factor. Cloak factor can go from zero to one. We could set these ranges at, we could set these numbers differently, but we're gonna keep them at the default because that's what the, mo what the engine expects to look at is a number between zero and one. Zero is no cloak at all, one is completely cloaked. So we'll just leave that there. And uh, while we're at it, we'll go ahead and do oops, his, uh, his head as well. Create animation set for element. Okay. And now I'm going to select, we're going to zoom in a bit here. And I'm going to select a little bit of time. And then I'm going to pull out the ramps as well. Actually, you know what, I'm going to move the whole thing over a little bit so that it doesn't just start that way. Okay. So what we've done essentially is we're going to have about a second and a half of lead in, then it'll ramp in, then it'll ramp out. So the idea is that the spy will not be cloaked, then he'll cloak, and then he'll decloak at a rate that I've set here with these ramps. So what we're going to do is grab this and just, I put the playhead anywhere in here. This is where they're at, the, at whatever value I set here. So I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to grab his head and I'm going to pull it over. And you notice it also left his tongue. So we're going to make an animation set for that as well. And we'll cloak his tongue and his, so we have to do this for each of his eyeballs. Eyeball left, eyeball right. Grab the cloak factor. And then he's, he's invisible. And we can even see you know what, I'm going to make it last a little longer because that's way too quick. So we'll do this. Oh, of course. Hold on. What I did there, if you're confused why the uh, all of this got desynced, was because um, I was only applying this to one of them. Um, so I'm going to grab them all, put the playhead in the middle here, and we're just going to bring the cloak factor all the way over for all of them and that there we go now it should work a little better okay and we can even make it take a little longer for the cloak to actually take effect and go back to the beginning of the shot and he disappears and it stops because it got to the end of the display window and then he reappears he disappears and reappears. Now you notice that the tint was different on the head than the body. I could play with the tints and make sure they're all the same. Those are things that you're going to want to do if you're actually applying this in your own um, animations. This is a tip. I'm not actually showing you everything. I'm sure you can figure out the rest with some of these pointers. Also, we can probably make the knife cloak. So what we're going to do is right click the knife and say add override materials. Then we're going to say Show in Element Viewer. We're going to grab it and say, well, I want to see the model in the Element Viewer. Grab the knife. W knife gold. If you want to do this with an Australian knife, then you're going to need to do that. But we're just going to uh, create an animation set for the knife. And put the playhead in here and say the cloak factor is 100%. And now the whole spy disappears and reappears all together. Lovely. Now we can do the exact same thing with the heavy. We can say show an element viewer, 
And I'm going to add uh, override materials. I'm not going to do all of the elements of the heavy's body this time. You've already seen me do that with the spy. So it really isn't critical that you see all that he that he disappears entirely. But let's just grab again. You see, he's got his the, the we got the red, we got the the excuse me the the red heavy, his red head, and there should be a heavy weapon blue. And we're going to create an animation set for the element cloak factor, and we'll just. Uh, Make him disappear. And we get ourselves almost a Cheshire Heavy here. So he disappears and reappears. His uh, his cloak his cloaking is is uh, you know we can change the cloak tint as well. So if we go here and say cloak color tint, let's say we actually want his tint color to be a something else. So let's say we we'll make it. How about a dark blue color? Okay. So, as you can see, you can experiment and have some fun with the uh, effects that you can apply uh, and produce some, some very interesting effects using the cloaking um, technique uh, to create the effects that you want. Again, the part that I love about this is you don't have to download um, all kinds of proxy material files. You don't have to get really crazy with the Element Viewer. You do have to dig into the Element Viewer a little bit, but that's okay. It's really easy to do. All you have to do is right-click the model in the animation set, or right-click the animation set, tell it that you want to add, um, oh, you, and you can also remove the override materials, by the way, once they're there. Uh, and then you can just add override materials, and then... Uh, once you've done that, you can uh, go into the materials node of the model. Remember the model, not the element, not the animation set in the element viewer. When you want to play with these things, you need to look at uh, the, you say, uh, show an element viewer and you select model. That's where you're going to find the materials node. And then any of these materials nodes are animatable. They won't all apply to every instance of the model because if we had a blue spy, the spy underscore red would be inapplicable uh, because it would be invisible uh, and vice versa. You get the idea. It's pretty simple. Once you've played with it a little bit, it should take you almost no time to figure out. And I'm really pleased that Valve added this. They've added a whole bunch of new features that make it easier to work with Source Filmmaker, so I'm excited to bring you some more of those as well in future tips of the day. So there you have it. That is how you can implement... Uh, cloaking and decloaking in Source Filmmaker uh, without having to do all kinds of crazy stuff uh, using just Source Filmmaker itself. So thank you for watching today's tip of the day, number 72. I am Jimmer Linz, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, I hope to see you next time for the next tip of the day. And in the meantime, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.